The head of the FBI says the agency is concerned about a recent spike in hate crimes against Asian Americans during the pandemic. At a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing Tuesday, Director Christopher Wray was pressed to condemn anti-Asian rhetoric used by the Trump administration. He was asked whether he thought comments blaming China for the coronavirus were linked to a recent series of deadly and unprovoked attacks targeting Asian American seniors. Here was his response. Well, I don't know that it's really my place as FBI director to start uh, weighing in on rhetoric, but I can assure you that that's not language I would ever use. And hate crimes against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders is something that we are concerned about. We take very seriously. Uh, we are investigating where we have facts sufficient to do that. We're also engaged in a variety of uh, forms of outreach uh, to the public. Uh, I think we've done, you know, 60 plus training or liaison events with the Asian American Pacific Islander community uh, since just March of last year. We've put out uh, intelligence reports to our partners about hate crimes uh, against that community in particular. Uh, and it's something we take very seriously. Since the start of the pandemic, Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth of Illinois has been calling for a coordinated federal response to address anti-Asian racism, and she joins me now. Senator Duckworth, welcome. Thanks for having me on. So, Senator, before I ask you uh, about the surge of anti-Asian incidents, I do also want to get your thoughts about New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, who has been accused of sexual harassment. Now, he apologized today, but said he will not resign. Do you think he needs to step down? Well, I think the investigation needs to go forward, and if they find that there is cause that, that he, uh, then, then then we can talk about him stepping down. But I think first and foremost, uh, we need to have an investigation go forward, and the his accusers deserve their time to be heard. Um, and, and that, for me, is the most important thing, is to make sure that the alleged victims have their time to let us hear uh, uh, their experiences. You know, the, the, this is such a sensitive issue, and I want to make sure that we put the alleged victims um, well-being first. And you've said you felt that in the past you made a mistake uh, in calling for former Minnesota Senator Al Franken to resign before an ethics committee investigation was finished. He was facing sexual harassment allegations. Do you think, Senator, that that experience has affected how you and other Democrats have responded to the accusations against Governor Cuomo? I don't think it's changed how I've, you know, I, I called for the um, ethics investigation, and um, I do think that we should allow that process to move forward. Um, I'm sort of returning to my military roots in that, you know, you, you need to have an investigation. We've been dealing with uh, um, sexual assault and sexual harassment in the military, and one of the things I've heard loud and clear is to empower victims and make sure the victims have their chance to uh, be heard and have their allegations uh, seriously uh, considered and, and explored. And that's what I think we should always start off with, is to let the investigation move forward. Well, let's turn to this recent surge of anti-Asian violence. First, what is your reaction to these incidents? And do you think, Senator, that the political will is there to get a piece of legislation like the No Hate Act passed? This is legislation that would help fund improved hate crime reporting. I think there is a will for to pass the, the legislation. Um, I will tell you that I, I wish I could say I was surprised, but I'm not surprised. Remember that a lot of the rise of Asian anti-Asian violence started because of efforts by the far right media and also by then President Trump. Uh, you know, using terrible terms like kung flu virus and all of these other racist terms, uh, they did not help. Uh, the situation. And frankly, um, it's appalling that uh, it's been allowed to go to become this bad. And I'm very, very grateful that President Biden has spoken out against uh, anti-Asian violence. Uh, we, of course, have an Asian American in the White House, in the um, in, in Vice President Kamala Harris. But we have a long way to go in this country. Asian Americans are still viewed as an other. We are still viewed, you know, I still get asked, well, where are you from originally? I'm like, well, actually, my ancestors have been here since before the revolution. Uh, so uh, let's talk about where you're from. Uh, so, so that is still pervasive. And we just simply, as a nation, can't afford that. We need our diversity. We need everyone uh, to help us work and pull ourselves out of this uh, situation we're in with our economy to fight the COVID virus um, and regain our footing. Uh, and we can't afford to be fighting each other. And certainly we can't afford to uh, condone any type of violence against any group within our nation. 
And what would you like to see from the Biden administration specifically on this point? Well, I think they've done a good job already of lifting up Asian American uh, experiences and, and the concerns with violence. Um, I hope that we see more um, uh, prominent Asian Americans uh, nominated to uh, uh, prominent offices within the Biden administration. Remember that President Obama had three cabinet secretaries uh, who were AAPI. I served under one of them, Secretary um, Eric Shinseki. Um, but I think you know they're well on their way, and, and let's let's keep making sure that uh, our government is as diverse as our people. You mentioned nominees. The last time that you were on the program, Senator, you expressed disappointment that President Biden did not have a cabinet secretary of Asian or Pacific Islander descent. And on Tuesdays, you know, who identifies as Indian American withdrew her nomination to head up the Office of Management and Budget. Now, some Democrats have suggested that she was subject to a double standard as a woman of color. How do you see it, Senator? And do you think the Biden administration made a mistake by accepting her withdrawal? Well, I think she was a subject to discrimination um, as a woman of color. I don't think that, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like there was a, a real reaction to her and, and the same Republican legislators who, you know, wanted to forgive uh, uh, acts by, um, you know, uh, former Republican nominees uh, seem to then go after her for this very same type of tweets and, and the like. Uh, I think we need to move forward. Um, I think that uh, I hope and I have asked the Biden administration that uh, the next nominee that they put forward to uh, be the director of the Office of Man Management and Budget be another Asian American, hopefully uh, an East Asian or Pacific Islander. And I've said them some great names. There's some wonderful people out there, uh, Asian Americans who could very well do this, who could do this job um, very well. Um, I also want to ask you, Senator, about allegations that Russia offered bounties to the Taliban to kill U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan. Now, last year, as you know, former President Trump called these claims a hoax. In September, the head of U.S. Central Command said the information was not corroborated. You are now calling for the Biden administration to release a declassified assessment of that intelligence. What prompted this, Senator, and have you had a response? Well, it's just a continuation of the work that I've been doing. Remember that uh, President, then President Trump had numerous conversations with Vladimir Putin, and not once did he tell him that uh, you will not uh, you know, employ this program of bounties against American troops uh, anywhere they're serving. And I'm very, very um, pleased that President Biden, in his first conversation as president with Vladimir Putin, brought up this Russian bounty program. Uh, and I'm just continuing to push forward for the same ask I made of Donald Trump, I am making of Joe Biden. Let's see what the investigation is. I think that any time there's an allegation that there's a bounty on U.S. troops' heads, we need to take it seriously and we need to investigate it. I don't care whether it's a Democrat or a Republican. This is about American troops, uh, and they deserve to have their commander-in-chief uh, um, defend them and watch out for them even as we Americans ask them to face harm uh, in defense of us. So I'm just continuing with the work that I was doing under President Trump, and I'm making the same ask of President Biden. I mean, depending on what the report says, though, Senator, uh, given your background, how should the Biden administration respond? Well, you know, there, there are any number of things that they can do, to, um, not the least of which is, is our sanctions. But I want to see the report first because I've not been able to see it so far. Uh, in our final minute, uh, Senator, you're also urging the Government Accountability Office to examine potential barriers that parents face in accessing child care, if either they or their children have a disability. And I know this is an issue that is personal for you as well. What is it you're seeking exactly and why? Well, I want to know exactly what the costs are. We, we all, during this COVID pandemic, have seen uh, how difficult it is for families to balance child care and work. Uh, I personally don't think that any family should be paying more than 30% of their income on child care. They should get some sort of help. Uh, and I do know that um, parents of children with disabilities or the parents themselves, if they have a disability, find it very difficult to access services. So I want to see what the picture is um, so that we can figure out how to remedy the situation. Uh, so often, uh, persons with disabilities can't actually get a job because they can't get the support that they need, such as for taking care of their own children. And then we have seen also during the COVID crisis, 
um, when we have had so many students um, having to participate in remote learning that children with special needs have really been left behind under this system because uh, they used to get help in the schools uh, under, um, and, but now because they're home, the schools are not providing help for these children with special needs. And then the special needs could be everything from mobility and learning disabilities to, um, uh, you know, a, a child that, that just needs a little extra time because they have ADHD or something like that. But I want to know what the true picture is so that we can truly address and solve the problem um, because every American is important. Every child is important. Um, and I do feel that it's important that I am a voice for parents and children with disabilities in the United States Senate. Illinois Senator Tammy Duckworth. Senator, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me on.